Hey everybody, how's it going? So yesterday was a pretty good day for Nintendo fans. We got a lot of awesome stuff revealed, including Smash Brothers. We got Terry Bogard in for the next DLC slot. We got Banjo release, and we also got confirmation of more characters after their fighters pass. Something that I was praying would happen, and I'm very pleased. Pretty much in terms of the direct overall, I can just say I'm satisfied with it. I went in with pretty much no expectations all I knew is that we were gonna be getting some cool stuff and that's pretty much exactly what we got so in this video I'm going to be going over my highlights of the direct can't go over everything of course but we'll talk about my favorite moments and favorite things they announced alright so for one let's get right into Smash Brothers that's what everybody's most excited about and we got confirmation of Terry Bogard now I gotta say right off the bat he looks clean this character really looks cool off of the short amount of gameplay that we saw. He looks like he's going to be a really fun addition. I'm going to be completely honest with you though, before the whole leak started happening, people were talking a lot about an SNK character, I had no idea who Terry Bogard was, and I think that goes for a lot of other people. Despite that though, he still pretty much earned his spot from being one of the most influential fighting game characters in the past 20 years, so I would say because of that, he definitely deserves a spot. Also, Sakurai likes the game. I mean, it's his game. Smash Brothers is his game. He can do whatever he wants. Now, I do feel like I should address this because I'm sure some people are already going to be commenting about it. And really, it's that there's not really anything wrong with not knowing who Terry was before Smash came out. It doesn't make you ignorant. It doesn't mean that you don't know anything about real video games or something. Like, sometimes video game characters fall through the cracks. There's so many companies, there's so many characters that it's hard to enjoy and know about all of them. I'm sure that there are plenty of people who play Smash right now who have no idea who half the characters are, but they still like them. I just see people getting mad at others for not knowing who Terry is, and I think that, you know, we should just be more open-minded. It's just what I think we should do moving forward with DLC. It's cool that Smash is really taking a leap into different kinds of fandoms and different kinds of games that people like from all over the world. It's really awesome to see because really now no characters off the table and I'm happy that Terry fans finally get their moment of rejoice at their characters in Smash. Something that I really hope we get with Sora for the Kingdom Hearts fans. Speaking of which brings us into our next topic and my favorite part of the direct finding out that there will be more DLC characters after the fighters pass. So this was something I was really hoping for that we would find out this information and something I was making a video on before the direct. I guess we gotta scrap that now or maybe I'll repurpose it. But this is definitely big news and I'm happy to see that our money talked and since we bought all the DLC characters and so many people bought Switches and Smash, the game sold amazingly. So they're going to keep the game alive, they're going to keep on making more DLC characters, and they're going to try to satisfy as many fans as possible. And that is just amazing news, because the Wii U wasn't really thriving when Smash came out. It was already dying, and Smash kind of brought it back to life, but now with the Switch, I mean, it's doing great, and we have many years ahead of it before they make another console, so why not keep Smash alive? Why not keep on making more characters and subsequently more money? But besides that, you know, this is a perfect opportunity for people who are really hoping for characters that they want to be in Smash. Now we have hope. We have pretty much hope for every character now, even while Luigi's not even off the table. So I'm really excited for this. And man, I am still really holding out hope for Sora. I pretty much have more hope now than I ever did for him getting into Smash. I mean, I've been waiting for him to come since pretty much before Brawl. And having him in Smash would be literally a dream come true. Sora is my favorite video game character. I've been playing Kingdom Hearts pretty much my whole life. And Smash and Kingdom Hearts have always been my two favorite series. So... I really hope that they can capitalize on Sora's huge following and make this dream come true for me and a lot of other fans. And lastly, in Smash news, we have Banjo, and finally Banjo-Kazooie comes to Smash after pretty much the entirety of Smash's existence. People have been asking for Banjo, and he's finally here, and he's so true to the original character. I just love what they did with him, and I'm so happy for Banjo fans finally getting this moment of joy. However, his side B is busted. I don't know how you're supposed to avoid that. And I did say last, but there is one more thing for Smash. That they added in another new character. And it's Sans. 
The thing is with Sans is that it's literally like Sans. There's no mistaking it. I mean, if you leak that beforehand with no context, people would be saying Sans is in Smash. That's because it literally looks like his real model. If he was a real character, that's what he would look like. So I'm really happy for Undertale fans that they get this super accurate Sans Mii costume. I mean, it's pretty much the most accurate Mii costume that exists. And now I've never played Undertale and I haven't been a huge fan of the game. However, I do definitely respect it. I especially respect Toby Fox as a creator. I'm sure one day I'll get around to playing it, but for now I'm just really happy for Undertale fans that they get pretty much the closest thing to a real full character for Undertale that we can get at this point. It's just really awesome to see how accurate this character is. So. So now moving on to another really cool thing that happened was we got Overwatch for the Switch. Now I love Overwatch, I have a lot of really awesome memories playing Overwatch with my friends so I'm really happy to see that come to Nintendo Switch. I don't think that I'll be having those same kinds of experiences because not a lot of people that I know have Switches. So. But it will be fun to play online again having this pretty much wherever I go that has Wi-Fi connection. I'm definitely getting the game when it comes out on October 15th. Hopefully this points to a future Tracer character coming to Smash. That would be awesome as one of the more recent icons to come to Super Smash Bros. And she's also really unique and has a lot of potential with the whole teleporting abilities that I really find it fun to use with characters like Mewtwo and Palutena with their upbees. You can teleport and maybe you'll get lucky and you'll end up in a pretty good position, but it is also kind of risky. So I think that they could really capitalize on that with Tracer. Now for our last topic of things I was most excited about, we have the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which is the HD remake of the legendary game on the Wii. I am so excited about this. When I saw this trailer, it gave me chills. Just the music and seeing Shulk being in that whole HD style for the first time, that was just so cool. I am very, very excited for this game whenever it does come out. And I'm glad that a lot of people that weren't going to ever play this game are now finally getting the chance to play such an amazing classic video game that everybody who's ever played it pretty much loves. So I'm really happy about that. I'm also excited to see what changes are made, how they're going to improve the gameplay style based off of the Wii game that came out many years ago. Now I'm not sure that they should totally revamp the gameplay to match up with something like Xenoblade 2 because that's quite different from the first game, but I would like to see some minor adjustments to make the game a little bit more efficient. But I mean other than that, this is like my number one game for 2020. So other than that guys, it's all I have for you today. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see you later.